Welcome in, everyone, and thank you for listening to the 166th ever episode of the Missouri Sports Podcast, brought to you by 106 Apparel and recording from the Revel Advertising Studio in beautiful Springfield, Missouri. I'm one of your hosts, Cameron Albert, alongside my good friend and fellow Mizzou fan, Kyle DeVries. What's so funny, Kyle? I don't want to talk about it. Okay, that's fine. I'm doing great, though. All right. How are you? I'm doing well. Did you ask me? No. No. You didn't even get to that line. I just knew you were going to ask. You look like you're about to start laughing uncontrollably, so I thought I would see what was going on. Uh, just a funny guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kyle, we have some housekeeping to take care of. Last week, we talked about the Mizzou basketball roster. We went through all the players, kind of previewed what to expect from them, made some predictions, and since we're back into the full swing of football with uh, recapping the Vanderbilt game and previewing the Georgia game, we're going to split up. We're going to do two episodes in one week, basically. So this is going to be the football episode of the week. Uh, then we're going to record immediately after that a basketball episode where we talk about the schedule and make our predictions for the record for the season. And we're just going to put these out a few days apart. That way we have two medium-sized episodes instead of one insanely long episode. But moving forward, expect football and basketball in the same episodes. We just have a lot to talk about this week, so we thought we'd split it up. And uh, that way if somebody wants to see just that basketball preview, schedule preview, they can go find that on their own. So that's the plan. And uh, before we get into it all, don't forget, you can support the podcast directly on Patreon, patreon.com slash Missouri Sports Pod. And if you don't want to support us directly or aren't able to, that's totally fine. We would just appreciate um, following us on Twitter, liking our uh, posts, uh, liking our YouTube videos, subscribing on YouTube, commenting, anything like that helps us a lot. So we appreciate all of our listeners and viewers. Kyle, let's jump into a little bit of news. And there is a potential SEC defender. He is making a move away from Texas A&M and has ties to Missouri. And that is Antonio Doyle. Antonio Doyle, um, a name we haven't heard for a couple of years, a whole lot, but uh, formerly of St. Louis Lutheran North High School. He is a linebacker and he actually was committed to Missouri uh, I believe that was in the Barry Odom era um, and then decommitted and went to Texas A&M eventually. But uh, he was at Texas A&M for two or maybe three seasons, probably redshirted and then wasn't getting on the field a lot. I mean, they've got a pretty good defense, so uh, but wasn't getting as much playing time as he probably wanted to. And I believe there's a pretty good chance that he will want to come back home to Missouri. Um, I think he will most likely get some more playing time here i think that's probably pretty safe to assume at least the opportunity will be pretty good for him to play here plays a linebacker position um he does yes he plays a linebacker which we could use uh a good linebacker too uh, if you watch any missouri football this year um he does uh he recently followed us on twitter so mm. i don't know what that means but it might mean something and i actually did happen to notice he tweeted something uh, during a Missouri football game in response to somebody that was kind of complaining about some missed tackles on Missouri's side of the ball, he said something to the extent of, he, um, well, it, it'd sure be nice to, to help make some of those tackles. Hmm. Kind of like, um, but he deleted it very quickly. So I don't even remember what it said exactly, but it was something to, to that effect. So it seems like there's some mutual interest. It seems like there would certainly be uh, a need for, for him if he, would, if he uh, wanted to come back home. He was a four-star player out of uh, Lutheran North, uh, number 89 in the country, according to 24-7 Sports, number three player in the state of Missouri. So uh, definitely a player that you would like to have on your squad. Um, Texas A&M is just a different type of team when it comes to recruiting rankings and stuff. So they basically just recruited over him immediately. And uh, so if you're a Mizzou fan, you could be pretty optimistic and think that you know, you're still getting potentially a four-star uh, player who can uh, develop a little bit more in your system and maybe make some plays. But uh, I would say Missouri's not going to be the only team that uh, tries to land him in the transfer market. But 
yeah, be in the home home state school um, and with the recruiting momentum that Missouri has and obviously the need for defensive playmakers, it makes a lot of sense. Seems to be a good fit. Um, let's save the injury report for more of the Georgia preview. Uh, we will talk real quick about the Vanderbilt game. Missouri won 37 to 28. Um, it was kind of an up and down game for Missouri. I was happy to see them kind of just, you know, the second half, they kind of distanced themselves a little bit and made everybody like able to relax a little bit early on. It was kind of scary. Um, but the story of this game is basically Tyler Beatty is um, incredible and he carried the ball 31 times for 254 yards and two touchdowns and also caught eight passes for 40 yards and another score. Yeah, this this game was full of like momentum swings. Uh, feels like Missouri started the game off pretty well and then gave up a big play and then Vanderbilt had some momentum from that. So, uh, And then, of course, Missouri had a big play going into halftime with the Hail Mary. So, um, And that kind of sent them into halftime on, on with some the good lead vibes. Somehow. Yeah, with, the, with the lead somehow. So. Yeah. Uh, it was a lot of momentum swings. Tyler Beatty was about the only consistent thing throughout. Uh, he was just really, really good. In fact, he had so many carries that I actually felt like I wanted him to come off the field for a little bit just to get a breather because yeah. it looked like he was gassed. At least in the second half, there was a couple of moments where you know he ripped off a big run and then they would just hand it right off to him again. And it's like, get somebody else in there just for a couple snaps. It'll be okay. Yeah. Um, rewinding a little bit you talked about the momentum so the momentum early was on Missouri's side and then uh, Missouri was driving they had the opportunity to go up with a field goal they would have made it 13-0 if they score a touchdown they're going up 17-0 in the first quarter and everything would have been looking really good but Connor Bazelak threw an interception and then immediately Vanderbilt's quarterback, I think it was that was a play where the quarterback ran for like 50 yards and Got Vanderbilt down to like the five or scored something. in like two or three plays. Yeah. And it went from at worst, they were already in, Missouri was already in field goal range. So they easily make it 13 0. Instead, it's 10 7, like three plays later. Yep. That was disappointing because Missouri. Missouri's offense was doing whatever they wanted to yeah. up to that point. And it's kind of like one of those things where we've seen this with offenses playing against Missouri. We're like, why are you even throwing the ball? Yeah. Because you're doing whatever you want. Why are you forcing a throw that could even be anything close to an interception? You know, you're just, you have the defense right where you want them and yeah, commit a turnover. Yeah, it was just an awful throw from Connor Bazelak too, where it just wasn't even close. I'm not even sure where he was trying to throw it to. Um, at the beginning of the season, obviously, we've talked about Connor Bazelak a ton, and there's been a lot of talk about him on Twitter and all this stuff. So, at the beginning of the season, though, I would have definitely said he's very poised. He's not going to lose you the game. Uh, I'm not sure I would say that about him anymore. He's made some really, really questionable decisions. Yeah. Made some really bad interceptions where it's not even close. Uh, just you got to figure out something else to do, whether it's getting the throwing the ball out somehow. Or... When there's just no reason to attempt the pass, really. Yeah. Like that, that was the case in this one. Yeah. That first quarter interception, just like, why throw the ball there? Yeah. I mean, like double coverage, too. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, uh, that is a mystery. Um, I guess let's just keep talking about Bazelak because he did get hurt uh, at the end of this game, which there's been a lot of people uh, asking for the services of a backup quarterback. And But I don't think anybody wanted to see it like this. You don't want to see your starter go down to injury. But that did allow Tyler Macon to come into the game, uh, which answers one question. I mean we've seen him for like one play earlier one or two plays earlier this season mm -hmm. uh we saw brady cook a little bit earlier in the season but both against simo i think right so bays like had been playing all the snaps for so many games in a row that we really weren't sure who we would see if they pulled him or if he got hurt mm -hmm. but we have our answer at least well i don't even know if we have our answer because i don't even know you if you can say that because uh if the if for whatever reason Connor Bazelak couldn't have started the Vanderbilt game, yeah, I think we would have seen Brady Cook. 
and I think that just situationally it made sense for Tyler Macon to come into the game at that point because he's the better runner. Um, I don't know that they trust him to pass as much as Brady Cook, and we didn't need to pass at right. that point in the game. I think they wanted uh, him to come in and run the ball and run the clock out. And Well, uh, he, he basically didn't have to do anything, honestly. Yeah. I mean, I think he ran three plays, yeah, so handed well. the ball off. or He, he did run he one ran himself. He ran on third and long and got nothing, so they punted. And then he got to stay out there for the next drive, handed the ball off to Tyler Beatty, who ran for – 73 yards literally yeah and then next play he keeps it making made, made a beautiful read yeah and, and walked into the walks end zone. into the end zone and that was his whole game yeah um i still i mean it was exciting though it was it was fun to to see just something different out there it was fun to see what he can offer athletically because i mean connor bays still would have walked in the end zone that was that was the Brady easiest Cook touchdown would have walked into the end zone as well that's kind of what i'm saying exactly is like, did we that's why i'm like kind of walking back what i was saying did we learn anything at all about the backup quarterback situation? No, I, 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 I think we learned a little bit, but I don't think we learned anything about Tyler making the player. Sure. Um, I, I don't know if we were going to get to this later or not, but I actually do think Brady Cook will start against Georgia uh, just because he's a little more experienced. I think he's a little bit more polished passer. And we're going to be passing all day long against Georgia. There's going to be very little reason to run the ball because we're going to be behind all day. So I think Brady Cook gets the start now. Well, where I think it really gets interesting, though, is I still think we could see Tyler Macon play. I could, I think we could see both of them play. So anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself, though. That's we're, okay. we're getting to the Georgia preview already. Um, looking a little, just a little bit closer at the offense, um, the, the whole – you pointed out to me, uh, I, I said when we were kind of talking about this in the pre-show, Bazelak didn't look that bad. Like his stats were okay, but then you reminded me a big chunk of those stats, like the touchdown and a bunch of those yards came on that one Hail Mary play at the end of the first half, and that's an excellent point. And it He's, still wasn't even a great throw. True. Just uh, made a great play on it. Yeah, and the defenders, in my opinion, kind of botched it a little bit. Uh, the fact that Kiki Chisholm was able he to just kind went of like right over them, yeah, like just kind of reach <laughs> over him and catch it, yeah, uh, was pretty incredible. But um, I don't know. I feel like I maybe I'm a little bit of a broken record on this, but the, the offense has just been disappointing. It's really stagnant week after week. Nothing like in the vertical passing game. Maybe they'll connect on one play a game down the field. Yeah, and the one this week against Vanderbilt of all teams yeah. was that Hail Mary, which is Yeah, it's weird. like they're trying to be so safe and then Bay's like will make a terrible throw anyway. Yeah. So but I mean is that is he just truly that bad of a passer downfield to where those mistakes are expected? Like it is doesn't coach, make any is sense. Is coach thinking like I don't really trust him to make these throws and that's why? Because surely not. I mean, why is he starting then? Yeah, you exactly. Know, I don't know. It is a confusing situation. Um, and people have pointed out this is the same Connor Bazelak who didn't win the starting job over Sean Robinson, uh, you know, yeah. previously. It's so true. I just think uh, <laughs> when you're losing games you, and when you're winning, you just there's different perspectives that come out about players and about the team. And obviously one thing, and this is all kind of just intangibles, but – you know, one thing, a good thing we had, to, we always talked about with Connor Bays, like was his poise. He was calm, um, under pressure, and all that stuff. When we were winning games, when he, mm-hmm. when things look good, but now whenever we're losing, it almost kind of seems like he is not very energetic. Is he really into the game that much? Like he almost just kind of goes back on the bench, sits down, and yeah. doesn't really interact with anybody. Um, you know, just I don't know. Is, is, are, is there leadership questions maybe about just his ability to get the team going? Like. I think that's maybe fair to question that he just kind of looks like he's maybe doing his own thing a little bit. Yeah. I mean, you don't necessarily, I mean, it's pretty normal for the quarterback to be like the leader of the offense, the vocal leader Mm -hmm. kind of rallying everyone. Um, That's not always necessary. I think of even just like past Mizzou quarterbacks. um, I don't think like Drew Locke, for example, was he really like, pumping everyone up and like getting everybody getting the offense like 
you know, pumped up to go out there and make plays. I think he just kind of did it with his play. Mm. Um, he would make big plays and get everybody excited. Yeah. Um, James Franklin, I think, is a good a good comparison as far as like their demeanor on the field to Connor Bazelak. Mm-hmm. James Franklin was criticized at times for like looking too chill in the pocket and um, not being as energetic and as much of a vocal leader. Although I think we would we did see we would see videos of him like leading the huddle, mm-hmm. leading the offensive huddle and getting everybody fired up. So I don't know if that's... Yeah, there's way too much to speculate about there. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we d- we're not with the players you know, behind the scenes or in the locker room or anything, but... It's, it's just a shame that that's where we are in the season, where we're having to, like... We're overanalyzing everything. Yes, because what is happening? Like, yeah. because we can't figure out what is going on with the X's and O's on the field other than we're not trying to throw the ball down the field right and it's confusing well uh brady cook did have one really solid drive and i guess it was against Simo, so you can't really you can't really take too much from that but i do think that he looked very disciplined he looked like he knew the playbook really well he was making crisp passes uh smart decisions so but everything's off the table when you're playing a team like georgia so who knows what's going to happen but um i guess i just uh it's kind of exciting knowing that there's a good chance we'll see one of the one or both of those backup quarterbacks and mm-hmm. see what they can do. Vanderbilt's offense uh, took advantage of Missouri's defense like we kind of expected but hoped they wouldn't be able to. Um, they were Vanderbilt coming into this game was averaging 99 yards per game rushing. Uh, they ran for 258 yards on 37 carries, and their quarterback. Uh, Mike Wright had like 150 yards on the ground so that's I you just kind of know that's going to happen in this game like he's going to find some running room there's going to be some breakdowns there's going to be some missed tackles and he's going to he's going to have a couple big plays I know you can't really you know pull plays out of the game and and say these things didn't happen but I really did feel and again it's Vanderbilt but I really did feel like the defense uh, collectively played a lot better in this game outside of like two big plays where Mike Wright just went crazy and ran for like 50 plus yards but I mean obviously those are statistical outliers but if you pull those plays out of the game Missouri's defense was fine um, not great but they just have to figure out a way to stop giving up the big plays like they, they just do that to everybody every team they've played has gotten at least you know one or two of those huge plays yeah, I mean, I would push back on that a little bit and say that Missouri's defense made the third string running back, um, what's his name, Patrick Smith. Yeah. They made him look pretty good. Yeah, he still had uh, a good day. He averaged just under six yards per carry. But they looked a little bit better, I guess, just because they've looked they've been historically terrible. So True. They, they were not good by yeah. any stretch of the imagination. 5.6 yards per carry it looks a lot better on the field during the game than 8.6 yards per carry. Yeah. Uh, Vanderbilt really didn't get a whole lot going through the air. Um, uh, they, I mean, right through for 122 yards. He did have three touchdown passes, but that just kind of, I mean, they easily could have scored on a few runs and then just so happened that they were in the red zone looking to throw. But uh, he had a, a couple runs himself that probably should have scored. Um, overall, you don't like giving up 28 points to Vanderbilt, but um, that's... Still felt good to win. Yeah. Uh, and, a contested game. And it felt good to get a conference win. Um, it it kind of seemed like early on I was ready to bring a take that was like, okay, the SEC has like a one team tier at the bottom that's Vanderbilt. <laughs> And then they have another one team tier right above that that's Missouri. And Around then South Carolina. Well, to be decided, I think maybe South Carolina is right there in that tier with Missouri potentially. They probably or are. but then but then as this game went on, I was like, no, forget that. Probably South Carolina, Missouri, and Vanderbilt are all in the bottom tier together. Very There's not enough differentiation there. Yeah. That's the conclusion I came to by the end of the game. I probably wouldn't even argue with that. Uh, Missouri gets back to 500 though, four and four on the season, one and three in conference. Um, was there anything big? Uh, any? Uh, 
Harrison Mevis still perfect on the season. He He's amazing. Is an absolute machine. Uh, keep up the good work, buddy. You and Tyler Beatty are one of the only reasons to watch this team this year. Uh, Chris Abrams Drain was a guy that was on that was questionable coming into the game. Uh, he, I felt like he may have had the best uh, game from anybody on the defense. Mm-hmm. He seems to really be flourishing um, in his position. And what, I what actually year think is he? he uh, I think he's like a sophomore, huh? maybe. But he, I, I could be wrong about this, but I know he's played nickel um, pretty much this whole season. But he may have played some corner in this game just because they were a little, a little dinged up at corner. So I'm not 100 percent sure about that. But he's just a versatile defender, and yeah. he's he's done well. Yeah. If he if he can kind of develop and uh, drop some of the like big uh, mistakes that he makes from time to time, yeah. if he can shore that up a little bit and keep the upside there, though, he is a little like high risk, high reward yeah. kind of player. Yeah, yeah. If he can uh, lower the variance a little bit, I think he will be a staple for Missouri's defense for the next couple of years. All right. So unfortunately, Missouri has to play Georgia. Um, there's not a whole lot to preview for Georgia, uh, but I will talk about them a little bit. Georgia did an incredible thing several years ago. They moved on from like a perennial, like nine, 10 win coach and went and hired Alabama's defensive coordinator, Kirby smart. And ever since then, they've been better than anybody could have ever thought. They like went to the national championship game their recruiting has been insanely good like they were like top 15 classes every year before kirby smart since he's been there it's been top 10 and then like the last four years top three every single year it usually doesn't work out that way too i mean obviously no offense producer cameron but nebraska is a great example of bo Pelini was he was pretty good yeah. he was winning nine ten games a season they let him go and have been bad ever since yeah and uh, Georgia does the same thing with Mark Richt, and it was like the greatest decision of all time. Insane. And I, it's so annoying to me because I just feel like I, I don't know, I feel like you just appreciate having like a stable coach who's given you 10 wins a year. Like you just appreciate that and, oh and you take in the good years when they're there. Yeah, Mizzou fans would kill for that. But, and it just annoys me that they're just like their insanity of just being like, yeah, we, we can do better. We can do better. And it actually worked out. Like it just, I don't know, that, that annoys me. And I don't think it's, I don't think that normally happens. No. Uh, so yeah, Georgia fans, you're, you consider yourselves lucky. <laughs> there were a couple of years. It took them a couple of years to get going. And, but it didn't take very long really in the, in the yeah. grand scheme of things. Yeah. They only had like the 12th ranked recruiting class there for a little bit. Now, now it's number one, two or three every single year. Do you remember, uh, I believe it was the first year Kirby Smart was there. They played at Mizzou and Georgia won on like a fourth and long play. Like Isaiah McKenzie scored a touchdown on fourth and long to win the game. Was that the... Uh, I believe it was 2016. W- was that uh, in Columbia? Yep. And uh, the Georgia player dropped the ball before he crossed the end zone? No, that was a different year. Oh. Missouri lost that game, but that's a whole other game that will yeah. get me all riled up too. I get, I'm getting them mixed up. Uh, 2016 was Missouri started off the year pretty good and then started off the Georgia game pretty well as mm. well and then ended up losing in heartbreaking fashion and I think it kind of derailed right, their season right. a little bit. I'm but. following you. Well, Georgia's having a pretty good year this year. The number one team in the country. They are 8-0. Uh, they started off the season by beating Clemson 10-3 to in a real shootout. Uh, since then, they've won every game uh, by quite a bit. They beat Auburn 34-10. to They beat Kentucky 30-13. to They beat Florida most recently 34-7. to um, If you want to, like, compare... Uh, like uh, same opponents, uh, Missouri just beat Vanderbilt, uh, thirty-seven to twenty-eight. Georgia played Vanderbilt earlier this season. They beat Vanderbilt thirty-five to zero. Oh wait, that was just the score at the end of the first quarter. <laughs> they beat Vanderbilt sixty-two to zero, and I just got a couple stats from that game. Okay, let's hear it. Let me pull up the box score. Georgia, they were number two at the time. They beat Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt, uh, as a team, passed for 24 yards on 18 attempts. <laughs> <laughs> Zero touchdowns, two interceptions. Uh, they also ran the ball 28 times for 53 yards. 
So they only ran like 40, 45 plays yeah. in the whole game. Yeah. For a grand total of less than 80 yards. I fully expect uh, Georgia to be able to beat Missouri that bad, potentially. Um, and it's really more so just because Missouri can't stop the run, which is what Georgia does so well. Um, if they were like, okay, Kirby Smart, you get a million-dollar bonus if you score 100 points against Missouri this weekend, I think they could do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if they really, really tried hard. Yeah. Yeah. I think they could. <laughs> because... If they, maybe if they just passed instead yeah. of running yeah. because it would take less time off the clock. Right. They wouldn't. Maybe, they maybe not. E- wouldn't even need to. They could just get right. big plays on the ground. They run, run out of bounds because they'll be Quick able to. Quick three and outs when Missouri has the ball. Yeah. They'll be able to run wherever they want. So like, they could just <laughs> run out of bounds every time and stop the clock. Or run at the end zone. That's true as well. They could. Yeah, they could do it. I think You're they right. Could. I don't. Why'd you have to bring that up? Well. We gotta preview the game, right? Uh, we gotta do it honestly. They're not gonna actually score 100 points, though. No, I don't think they will, but they could. Um, we have Georgia has a little bit of a quarterback situation going on. Um, JT Daniels has been injured, so Stetson Bennett has been playing, and he hasn't been awesome, but uh, good enough. Doesn't really need to be. No, but JT Daniels is a very, very good quarterback. Mm-hmm. So if he plays, as if he played against Missouri, uh, if he plays and they wanted to score 100, then they definitely could do it. But I don't know if we'll see him because I think Georgia will just – if we may see him just to like so that he can kind of knock the rust off a little bit. But I think Stetson Bennett will start this game and they're going to try to save J- JT Daniels and make sure that he is healthy for their like home stretch. Yeah. SEC championship game, uh, playoff games, that sort of thing. But I wouldn't be surprised if they get him out there to kind of make sure that he's ready to go for their next game. Um, They've got, you know, three or four running backs that would start for most teams in the SEC. Um, There's like two positions on Missouri's team that, uh, on Missouri's roster, where we have like players that would start at lots of other teams. And that's Tyler Beatty and Harrison Mevis. Uh, Harrison Mevis, I'm convinced every single team in the country would take him. I think you're right. Legitimately. Yeah. Uh, Tyler Beatty, on the other hand, especially when you're talking about the SEC, there's a lot of really good running backs in the SEC. Um, and so he would be in the mix on some of these squads. But Georgia, for example, uh, they're just they're just kind of loaded at running back. Yeah. And... Um, but where they're more loaded is on defense. This is one of the best college defenses in quite a while. Yeah, I think this is probably one of the – maybe the best college defense since, like, 2010 Alabama or something. I mean, this is legitimately a top five college football defense ever, potentially. Yeah. Like, they're actually that good. So if you look at the uh, points against – so points given up per game – this season, in eight games, Georgia's giving up 6.6 points per game. So just under a touchdown per game. Uh, second in the country is Cincinnati at 14.3, and then Clemson at 15.3. Second in the SEC is Texas A&M at 16.1 points per game. So Georgia's defense is 10 points per game better than the second-best defense in the SEC. That is unreal. They give up 74 yards per game running, rushing, and about 151 yards per game passing. So they just do everything well. And they're also, I think, the second highest scoring offense in the SEC. So, yeah, I don't know. There's no weaknesses uh, player-wise. I think they're well-coached, too. Um I don't know. It's just going to be a brutal game, I think. I'm afraid. So is Missouri going to score? (laughs) I think they will. Only field goals, though. I don't think they'll score a touchdown. I think Harrison Mevis will kick a couple of field goals. Okay. And keep them right under that average of seven points. (laughs) 
Jeez. I think is it score prediction time? I guess so. Give me uh, sixty-three to six. Wow, Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for specifying. If I needed to clarify that. Oh man. Yeah, they they shut two games in a row. They shut out their opponent. Uh, Vanderbilt sixty-two to zero. Then they follow that up with thirty-seven to zero against Arkansas. I'm trying to think what their most impressive win is. I mean, it might be that, honestly. Arkansas? Yeah. yeah. Just completely dismantling Arkansas. They did that to Florida, too. I don't know, man. It's just every game they've played. I almost feel like they should have beat Clemson worse than they did. Yeah. Because Clemson has proved to not be all that great. Right. But that was maybe the first game of the year, I think. So I'm going to say that Missouri is able to score one garbage time touchdown and they get one field goal so i'm gonna say missouri scores 10 points you said how many 60 i think i said 63 to 6. i think georgia's gonna win 50 to 10. i think they'll kind of pump the brakes a little bit in the second half get some second third stringers in there if missouri and georgia play a thousand times does missouri win once Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> I mean, that's just kind of almost what you have to do to go into this game. I mean, expectations, there are none. Um, just, I don't know. I guess enjoy a, a fall Saturday what, with football on your TV. I mean, just don't have a high expectations for anybody on Missouri squad. If there's the backup quarterbacks are in there, they're going to probably struggle. And if they don't, then make them the starter for the rest of the year immediately. Yeah whoever it is yeah (laughs) this georgia team is unbelievably good there's really nothing else to say about this team other than they have a historically great defense and their offense is really really good too so they're they're most certainly going to run the table the rest of the season they they play missouri then they play at tennessee uh then they play charleston southern that'd be good uh and then they finish on the road at georgia tech so wow they're going to cruise to the sec championship game yep and they'll play Alabama. Alabama. And both of those game. teams should probably make the playoff. Yeah. Oh, fun times. College football, got to love it. Yeah. Missouri Missouri will be there one of these days. Let's get, get the recruiting going. A few more five stars, you know, just... Expand s- the field to eight teams. Yeah. <laughs> just, you know, 17 more five-star players a year, and yeah. Missouri's right there. Exactly. That easy. Okay, let's pick a few more games. We actually have more games to pick this week than we had the last two weeks. Uh, there's not as many teams not playing. So um, I think we gained like two points maybe, one or two points on the guest pickers. Uh, we've been inviting our Patreon supporters to be a guest picker, pick against us all year, and they've been doing really well. <laughs> and Very well. They're, they're beating us. So we are looking for every opportunity to gain some points back. And if you want to make guest picks, join the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Missouri Sports Pod. Alrighty, so we did make up a little ground last week. There were only four games to pick, um, but we got w- the three of us each got two picks right. We all got one of one upset, so three points for each of us. And our guest picker, Britt, got one point. Mm. Thank you, Britt. <laughs> that brings our season total so far. Cameron, you have. Well, the guest pickers are at 50. Cameron, you have 45. I have 42, and Kyle has 41. Okay. So I'm going to make a move this week. Time to go. We've got seven games we're picking mm, this week. Sounds good. Our guest picker this week is Tristan. Tristan, welcome in. Welcome back. All righty. Game one, Liberty at number 16, Ole Miss. Ole Miss is a nine-and-a-half-point favorite. Doesn't Liberty have the outstanding quarterback? Am I thinking of the right team? Yeah. They have like a... He's going to be drafted. Yeah. 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 Uh, also, Liberty and Ole Miss uh, have a shared history of um, hiring and employing head coach Hugh Freeze. I don't know where you're going with that. Uh, give me Ole Miss. Missouri plays Liberty this year again in basketball, basketball. as well. Yep. What's the line? Nine and a half. Ole Miss at home? Yes. Uh, I'll take Ole Miss. I think they're they're pretty banged up though. I mean that 
They, that could uh, be a close game. Who they they played Auburn last year last oh, week and lost and lost. Yeah, they didn't look very got good. Upset. And they've got they're dealing with a lot of injuries. I wouldn't be surprised if that's and their a close defense game. sucks. Yeah. So maybe that quarter. Mm. Uh, I'll take Ole Miss. All yeah. right, everybody's on Ole Miss. Got to pick your spots. <laughs> Next game is number thirteen Auburn at number fourteen Texas A and M. Texas A and M is a four and a half point favorite. Give me Auburn. Uh, who, who, did, who did Tristan pick? Auburn. Okay. It's at A and M. You said. Yes. Twelfth man. I'll take A and M. Oh yeah, give me A and M. Auburn, they looked pretty good last week. Yeah. Why don't I want to pick them? I think they're just not. They're just kind of boring. Yeah. They're not that great, but yeah. They're not very explosive. Sure. Sure. All right. Number 17, Mississippi State at Arkansas. Arkansas is a four and a half point favorite. Give me Mississippi State. I'll take Arkansas. Who did Tristan pick? Arkansas. These are some good games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, good slate this week. Making up for lost time. Yeah. Um, shoot. <laughs> Taking this way too seriously. <laughs> I want to make up some ground. Um, Mississippi State's fraudulent. Keep that in mind. I'll take Mississippi State. <laughs> yes, you will. All righty. All right, next game is an easy one. LSU at number two, Alabama. Alabama, Alabama is a 28-and-a-half point favorite. It's a heck of a rivalry. Um, I'll take Alabama. <laughs> I'll go with you there. Everybody's on Alabama. Who did oh. they lose to? Texas A&M. Hmm. All right. Tennessee at... Number 18, Kentucky. Tennessee is a one-point favorite. Give me Kentucky. Who did Tristan pick? Kentucky. He picked them when the line was even. So, Does that change anything? I feel like it should. No, it definitely shouldn't is what I meant to say. <laughs> he he gets the upset points if Kentucky oh, yeah. wins. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, oh, man, I don't know. These are all great games. Wow. I wish that Kentucky was favored. Yeah. Because I kind of wanted to pick Tennessee. Still can. You still gain a point. Uh, Give me Kentucky. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, is Tennessee good? I don't know. I, I, like, <laughs> they, they were against Missouri. Uh, yeah, they like completely dropped off my radar after the Missouri game. Um, I got to pick Kentucky. It's so boring, but I, I can't. I got to pick my spots. I can't afford to lose. All ground. right. I'll switch. If oh, I, oh. Everybody pick Kentucky? Yep. Okay. Give me Tennessee. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Next game is Florida at South Carolina. Florida is an 18-point favorite. Florida. Dan, Dan Mullen's trying to get fired. That'd be – I would almost said like, that'd be cool, but if he's going to run them into the ground, like give him a few more years to do it, I That's say. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, like uh, – I guess they've had some recruiting struggles, which is weird because I didn't know that was possible at Florida. But They're still sixth in the conference for this upcoming Yeah, it's still like class. pretty good, but yeah. I guess they, they must have had a big loss or something recruiting-wise or something, missed on somebody or something because he was asked about it in a press conference, and his demeanor yeah. – went south he was not happy to be asked about recruiting and he basically just said like this is in season we don't talk about recruiting in season and so i'm like okay yeah that's gonna be used against you buddies right. which is fine yeah and people are definitely like taking an uh, uncharitable reading of that and saying like <laughs> he doesn't do recruiting exactly. during the season which, which is, is not ridiculous. true but also you're just kind of opening yourself up to that kind of ridiculous criticism yeah when you say something like that what what a what a villain what a villain! Love it. I hate him. Uh, like the be- like a bumbling villain, like the best thing. What's a bumbling? You know, just like kind of doing poorly oh, okay. in your villainy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now Ford is still going to beat Missouri this year, but <laughs> <laughs> if they're on a downward trajectory, sign like me that. up. Sign yeah. me up. Me too. So I pick Florida. Florida. <laughs> Florida. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> Florida. All right. Everybody's on Florida. <laughs> All right, the last game 
is number five Ohio State at Nebraska. Oh, that's Ohio a barn State burner. is a fifteen point favorite. Uh, Give me Ohio State. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take Ohio State on that one. Did I did I pick anything different from Tristan? <laughs> um, two games. Okay, I'm good with that. You're good with that. Yeah, I'll take Ohio State. I was trying to decide if I needed to switch to picking Tennessee with Kyle. <laughs> See if he wanted to switch back to Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take you up on that if you want to. I know, I'm good. <laughs> Trading picks. <laughs> All right, everybody picks Ohio State. Okay. It's well, it's, I'm not giving up on this competition. No, yeah, me either. Are you giving up on Saturday against Georgia? Yes, but I'm still going to watch it. <laughs> I will watch every snap. That's what we do. Oh, yeah. We're a fan of the team no matter what. Somebody's going to do something good, maybe, hopefully. Maybe. And I can't wait to see who it is. Yep. The kicker. I swear, yeah. if... Uh, they should have bobblehead day. Honestly, I already Googled it. There's not one. Yeah. They should have one. It's Every year. Awesome. Harrison yeah. Beavis bobblehead? Yeah. yeah. I would love to have that. Absolutely. Um, Bobble leg. They have those. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one leg's like dangling, <laughs> like, like a spring loaded, like yeah, a like torn a, ACL, just yeah. dangling there. <laughs> you can pull it back and like kick something with it. It's <laughs> a good idea. All right. Uh, I hope he goes perfect for the season. That'd be really fun. That'd be so. He's probably going to be what? He's a sophomore, right? Yeah. He's going to be probably the leading scorer at Mizzou all time, right? I guess. I don't know. I think, I think he has a shot at that, but t- I feel like kickers always have a oh, shot yeah. at that. Yeah, and if he's a good kicker, yeah, and doing it for four years, just that's your job the whole time. Uh, he doesn't get quite as many opportunities as other kickers around the country, just because Missouri's offense hasn't been quite as high powered as others. But yeah, it's fun to watch. Uh, let me do let me do my thank yous. Uh, special thank you to our Patreon supporters at the ten dollar level and above: Britt Treese, Brian Smith, Ryan Lee, Tristan, Ben Smith. Parker, Daddy JD, Lewis Hernandez, and Tim Keens. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, boys. Uh, you can find us on on uh, Spotify, <laughs> Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. We're on Twitter, at Mizzou Sports Pod, and you can email us at MissouriSportsPod at gmail.com. Thank you, boys. You can find our T-shirts and stickers on our online shop, MissouriSportsPod.BigCartel.com. Thank you, boys. Thank you, everyone, for listening. We will see you next week. Yeah, they're good on.